Hello, today's lecture is a continuation of previous lecture separation of natural gas. So, this lecture is separation of natural gas 2. We will continue our discussion about the separator and the separation of natural gas. So, from the previous lecture, we understand the separator function is separating gas and liquid phases and this can be done by designing appropriate separator. The separator should have the facilities to provide the primary phase separation where the liquid hydrocarbon from the gases are being separated as the fluid is entering in the separator. There should be uh, enough room in the separator where the entrained liquid mist from the gas is also getting removed as well as the entrained gas from the liquid. So, the entrained part which is like gas in the liquid and liquid in the gas are getting separated and that is done in the disengagement section where the enough room is there to allow settling of two phases because of the gravity or because of the force balance applied on one phase by the other phase. There should be a provision in the separator where the separated phases are not getting mixed again no re entrainment is happening. For example, in a vertical separator it looks very simple like the gases are removing from the uh, top part while the liquid part from the bottom while in the horizontal separator they travel all the way in the same diameter or same cross sectional area. So, the design of vertical separator and horizontal separator are different. We will discuss those as we go ahead in this class. To achieve the function of separator, the separator should have three component as already discussed in the last class. There should be a primary separation facilities that can be achieved by centrifugal inlet device. So, as the fluid is entering with a significant velocity because of the gravity applied or centrifugal forces also applied on the faces, the heavy or the larger size droplet of the liquid phase are getting separated immediately as the fluid is entering in the section. In the disengagement section, allow liquid droplet to settle out of the gas stream and adequate surge room should be available in the separator. So, no remixing is happening. Sometimes it happens a small droplet present in the system are not getting separated neither at the inlet position nor in the disengagement section. For that reason, there is a mist eliminator installed on the top part which is kind of a device where the small particles are getting coalesces or getting amalgamate and forming a larger particle and those larger particles are getting settled down because of the gravity. So, when we say the operation of separator or the design of a separator, we need to understand how much quantity of the gas phase as well as liquid phase the separator is going to deal with. For example, a non flow rate with a fixed composition is fed to a separator depend on the separator temperature and pressure the separation in the gas phase and liquid phase will happen and this calculation can be done just by balancing the forces. We can calculate the terminal velocity. If the vapor velocity or the gas phase velocity which is carrying this liquid is lesser than the terminal velocity, the liquid will get significant time to get settled out during this disengagement section. We can calculate the gas capacity knowing the area or means knowing this area of the vessel and knowing the vapor velocity, we can calculate the flow rate Q that can be converted to Q standard. Similarly, we can get the amount of the liquid or the volume of the liquid that is getting separated from this feed that is entering to the separator, we can calculate the liquid capacity. So, when we go to market, there are several separator available in a different dimension. The first thing we need to provide to, to a vendor how much quantity of liquid and vapor we are going to deal with a particular separator accordingly we can choose a appropriate size. This is just about L y d means length and diameter ratio for the horizontal separator as well as 
height and diameter ratio for the vertical separator, but other arrangement internal arrangement of the separator depend on several factors like the mist eliminator is required or not required, the baffle within the uh, chamber or the within the separator is required or not required. Similarly, it is a two phase system or a three phase system, but performing the flash calculation at least we can estimate how much quantity of the vapor and liquid are going to be deal with by a particular separator. So, we understood in the last class how to use equilibrium ratio concept given by standing 1979, we can calculate volume of liquid and volume of gas that will be produced when a particular composition feed is sent to a separator that depends on the composition of course, and knowing the equilibrium ratio of individual component that can be done because for the individual component their critical point boiling points are available and those information is only required to process with the equilibrium ratio or the flash calculation. If we understand more detail about exactly what happening in the separator and how the separator is functioning, we need to know more information. More information in the sense it is not just the volume of particular phase, it is in a particular section of the separator how the process is happening, how much volume or area or the height in a vertical separator or length in a horizontal separator is required to perform individual operation. When it is considered the liquid is traveling upward in a vertical separator. Let us assume it is a vertical separator and vertical separator from the feed the liquid enter in the separator. Now, because of the forces the feed which is entered in the separator is facing will decide which direction the fluid will move. For example, here it is shown a liquid droplet just consider a spherical liquid droplet that is being carried forward or upward by a vapor gas. It depends how much is the vapor velocity is there, what is the terminal velocity of this liquid droplet will decide the liquid will go up or down that can be done by the force valence on this liquid droplet that is drag force vapor velocity is going up. The uh, drag force will also go in the same direction the gas will try to lift this droplet upside and that will be balanced by the net gravity forces that is gravity minus buoyancy forces. The expression is given here. So, the net gravity force that depends on the mass of the droplet that can be calculated considering the droplet is a spherical uh, size knowing the density of the liquid we can calculate the mass applying the gravity minus buoyancy forces we can get the net gravity force like this. Drag force it is opposite the direction of the droplet velocity that is given by F t. This is the force exerted by gas on the liquid droplet. When these two forces are balanced and the velocity is taken out that is the terminal velocity and the velocity of the vapor if it is less than the terminal velocity then only the liquid will settle out otherwise it will go with the vapor or it will go with the vapor to top if mist eliminator is there it may get separated there otherwise it will be carry to outside of the separator with the gas. Sauder Brown had given the same empirical formula terminal velocity can be related to the density of both the phases with some empirical coefficient k that is called the terminal velocity constant or empirical constant. But when we compare with the force valence, we see this k can be represented in some of the parameters. The k can be represented in terms of droplet size and drag force coefficient applied by the gas on the liquid. Still it is empirical formula because it did not count the height for the vertical separator and the length for the horizontal separator as well as it is assumed the liquid is a spherical and the movement is happening in a vertical direction. The things may be different when there is a different design. For example, in horizontal separator the drag force 
is in, in the direction of the flow while the gravity will always be perpendicular to that one. So, the force valence will be different and the k value will also be different. The k value is reported in literature and we can get that value depend on the other parameter like at what pressure the separation is happening, the k value will also depend on the composition and d p is the diameter of liquid droplet, c d is drag coefficient, v b vapor velocity, v t is terminal velocity. If we can calculate the terminal velocity means there is no separation is happening and we can design a separator considering the vapor velocity lesser than this velocity, we can make sure the separation of significant size of the droplet is happening during this disengagement path movement. So, let us understand some more terminology or some more techniques those can be used in a gravity separation process like a stage separation and low temperature separation processes. We will continue our discussion with the design procedure for three phase and two phase horizontal and vertical separator. Vertical and horizontal gravity separator are very widely used. So, we are not considering other type of the separator those are available and those are also used for different applications. The equation of motion like I had shown in the last slide, the trajectory of the droplet will decide type of the forces applying on it and in which direction the droplet will move. Separation criteria for horizontal and vertical vessels are not identical as already mentioned the trajectory of the droplet is different. If we go by the force balance, the horizontal will behave differently than the vertical separator. Decide one that needs the physical requirement depends on steam specification and economic attractiveness. So, designing a separator is not only it is able to deal the amount of the liquid and vapor we are going to process with this separator, but depends on the economic attractiveness also. Several methods have been developed over the time to design separator to meet the need and we can choose from the literature, but let us understand how certain section of a separator are designed and considered in this class. So, in a stage separation hydrocarbon mixture when it is fed to a separator we are doing the separation of vapor phase from the liquid phase or liquid phase from the vapor phase that can also be performed in a stage wise manner. So, in stage separation there are more than one stages are chosen and we are having separator at one pressure and the next separator at a lower pressure than the first pressure and we can accomplish more liquid recovery by doing such arrangement. In each separator the flash calculation or the equilibrium ratio concept can be applied to get what is getting into a separator and what is getting out of the separator and that out from one separator is the feed to the next separator. A two stage separation process requires just one separator and one storage tank. So, in a stage separation always there is a storage tank where the separation after the separation the uh, liquid part is getting accumulated. In three phase separation or three stages separation requires two separator and a storage tank. Usually the number of stages required are limited to 3 to 4 the separation can be achieved within 3 to 4 stages. In case of high pressure gas condensate separation a step by reduction of pressure on the liquid condensate can significantly increase the recovery of the liquid. So, the stage wise separation provides several advantages. First thing is the separator designed just for one process needs just one stage separator where the entire pressure that is released from the choke is going to be handled by a separator and that separator design will be more complex. A step wise reduction in the pressure will help us to design or recover more liquid without having the more complexity involved in the designing part. Second of course, the cost will go up when we are having the more separator in series or in a stage separation performance, but recovering the higher valued compound will help us to offset the price associated with the separation. How to perform that separation in a stage wise? We can see here 
prediction of the performance of the various separator in a multi stage separation process depends on feed composition that is entering to a separator temperature and pressure at various stages. So, for example, here the feed is entering and after this, this is going to the second separator and then finally, it is going to uh, storage, this is storage, this is separator 2, this is separator 1. So, at each separator what is going in and at what temperature pressure they are being operated will decide how much recovery can be achieved and that can be done developing the computational model that can be based on the flash calculation or some other procedure like the equation of a state that can tell us from separator 1 how much liquid and gas is separated and the liquid which is going here the gas will go out which is going to second how much liquid and gas separated at this second one and finally, here we are getting the liquid accumulated. So, here gas will also get separated out. The first stage separator of course, operate at the well inlet condition. So, the flow line from the well the first separator is installed and that is operating characteristic of the well. So, at a particular pressure the well is producing that is faced by first separator and further the pressure is getting reduced in the next stage. Pressure at low stage separation based on equal pressure ratio between the stages. So, it is reported in the literature if equal pressure ratio is considered like the outlet pressure from a separator to inlet pressure, if it is designed in such manner the ratio should be kept equal in each stage to have a optimum recovery as well as optimum design. Campbell in 1976 given a formula that says how to calculate the pressure ratio and that is P 1 by P s. P 1 is the feed pressure or the pressure of the separator 1 and P s is the separator of a storage tank like this is P 1, this is P s. NST is the number of stages minus 1. So, if this is used we can calculate the pressure ratio and based on the equal pressure ratio we can calculate the intermediate pressure like here P 2 we can calculate knowing the previous separator pressure divided by the pressure ratio. So, stage by separation is going to help us in recovering more liquid as well as handling the high pressure system because the pressure that is coming from the well or the fluid coming from the well at a very high pressure, we need to reduce it because the other units those are pro those are installed for processing the gas needs low pressure or the equipment those are handling these gas are not designed to handle very high pressure system. So, the separator job is not only separating the things, but also reducing the pressure. Another scheme could be low temperature separation, where reducing the operating temperature of a separator increases the liquid recovery. We separate water and hydrocarbon liquid from the inlet well stream and recover more liquid from the gas. So, in this type of the separator assembly or separator choice, low temperature separator are designed. The low temperature can be achieved in a different manner. One of the ways install a choke or pressure reducing device or a restriction because of the Joule Thomson effect the pressure at the outlet means the pressure to a separator will be less as well as the temperature will go down because of the Joule Thomson effect and low temperature separation will provide more recovery of liquid compared to normal separator. This is an efficient means of handling high pressure gas and condensate at the well. So, if the condensate are present, it is better to operate it in a low temperature separation zone or with the uh, with a separator operated at low temperature condition to recover more condensate and liquid compound. A low temperature separator always equipped with high pressure separator means you are supposed to reduce pressure significantly. So, a separator should be designed to handle the inlet high pressure stream. Pressure reducing device like already mentioned choke kind of the device or restriction which reduce the pressure 
reduce the temperature and various pieces of heat exchange equipment. So, because of the temperature drop, the water molecules and the lighter component of the hydrocarbon, non-hydrocarbon gases, they may form gas hydrate kind of the structure and to avoid that heat exchanger devices are installed. So, they are not allowing to form the hydrate at that temperature condition. When the pressure is reduced by using a choke, fluid temperature decreased due to Joule Thomson effect already discussed in detail in a CPR system, where we had discussed isentropic reversible process happen when the fluid pass through a restriction and because of the Joule Thomson effect, the temperature reduces. We can calculate the temperature reduction by performing the ideal gas law under isentropic condition. Pressure reducing choke on the inlet is installed at a high pressure system that provides like hydrate fall to the bottom settling section of the separator. So, in this case when the pressure reducing device is just installed at the separator not, not before that. So, immediately when the fluid is entering through this restriction leaving on the other side the hydrate kind of the structure or the uh, heavier compound will fall down at the bottom of the section. Those hydrates can be heated and melted by liquid heating coil located in the bottom of the separator to get them in a liquid form compared to the hydrate. So, the low temperature separation process is very good scheme. It can be applied in a stage separation also and that can provide significant amount of the higher valued hydrocarbon compound otherwise those need to be separated in the further process units. With this let us go to understand the design and selection of separator. We are going to understand some of the component of the separator design. We are not going to understand in detail the designing part of the separator means we are not going to consider the material of construction, the pressure the separator is going to handle, the thickness, wall thickness is required, the corrosion alloyance means all the mechanical aspects of the separator are not going to be discussed in today's class. This in this class we are going to understand some of the important aspects of separator design those should be known before we are going to use or ordering or purchasing a separator. For example, if it is a three phase separator, the gas liquid separation can be done as we already discussed by the force balance on a liquid droplet that is traveling vertically, we can get this terminal velocity k is empirical and as long as k is empirical, this equation holds equally for horizontal as well as vertical separator. The k will take care about the type of the fluid as well as the design means it is a vertical or horizontal separator. So, if we go to literature we can find there are plenty of literature available that says how to choose this empirical constant for gas liquid separation. In this table it is shown it depends on the pressure being considered in a particular separator we can choose the k value using this empirical correlation. Gas processing supplier association had given an empirical formula that says for the pressure range of 0 to 1500 psi k can be calculated in terms of the pressure and that pressure appears here. We can find several literature and those provide the data for a different condition. Similarly, when three phase is present, we can consider in the gas liquid separation section, we can consider gas as one phase and liquid is another phase. That another phase of liquid is considering both heavy liquid as well as light liquid. So, in this three phase separation, we consider gas, light liquid and heavy liquid. So, the light liquid could be oil and heavy liquid could be water or there might be a possibility that the oil itself is having the two phases, one type is the light higher API, gra API gravity fluid that is light fluid, another fluid is 
low API gravity fluid that is heavy liquid. So, in gas liquid we consider gas and liquid while within the liquid we can use Stokes law of buoyancy that is again the force balance. So, the force of viscosity on a small sphere moving through a viscous fluid can result us another relationship that says how to calculate the terminal velocity when the two liquids are getting separated and that depends on the density of heavy liquid, density of light liquid and the viscosity of a continuous phase. So, for example, if a light liquid droplet is getting separated from a continuous phase of heavy, then this should have the viscosity of heavy phase or other way if large size droplet of heavy phase are getting separated from the light phase, this should be the viscosity of light phase. So, the viscosity depends on which phase is getting separated from the other phase. Knowing this, the numerical coefficient appear here is just because of the unit balance uh, like unit may be different viscosity is on incentive poise. This entire things can be clubbed together in the form of a constant k s that depends on the droplet size. We can get the expression similar to what we got for the gas liquid system. This expression will tell us how one phase or means lighter phase from the heavy phase or heavy phase from the liquid phase can get settled out if the force balance are done under the Stokes law of Y and C. The value of K s are reported again for different droplet size. Here we can see here when the hydrocarbon specific gravity is given like it is less than 0 0.85 at a particular temperature we can see depend on the phases. Here it is on heavy phase water or caustic or water or caustic in both the cases the droplet if it is size of 127 or 89 the K s value will change and you can see it is significantly changing 0 0.333 to 0 0.168. So, almost half. If system is separate like light phase is water and heavy phase is peripheral droplet size will be around 89 and you will get 0 0.163. If the system are different light phase and heavy phase the K s will be different and those values are available in literature for significant combination of light phase and heavy phase under different conditions. We can get that value from the literature. Once we know K s, we know the density of the heavy phase, density of the light phase, viscosity of the heavy phase, viscosity of the light phase, we can calculate certain information about what is the settling time, what is the uh, resistance time of the system where three phase system is being considered. So, for example, if we go ahead on a design part, here I am showing two phase vertical separator and that shows how it is important and why it is important to consider the internal arrangement of different sections. So, for example, this is the feed condition and according to the primary criteria of designing a separator, we just need to know about the amount or the volume of liquid and vapor the separator is going to deal, but here we will see how different sections are important. So, the feed is entering from here through a nozzle of diameter d n and when the feed is entering here it will get separated. Let us assume it is following the gas liquid separation type of the things where the liquid droplet will travel upside because of the vapor velocity and this is the disengagement height S t. During that height this further separation will happen and if something could not be separated out, the small droplet could not be separated out, they will go and hit this mist eliminator where further separation will occur. So, depend we are having internal assembly like mist eliminator is optional, it is there the height will be different, height of the vertical separator will be different and there are other section like 
you see here different sections are shown here triple L, NLL, HLL. They are having their own meaning. In two phase separator, we just worry about two phases. So, vapor is going up and liquid is going down. We want the liquid that is going down is having significant surge volume where it is getting accumulated because this separator is connected to another device and another device the input to another device or another unit operation I should say will be getting feed from this separator. So, the separator should have significant amount of both the phases at a particular time that can be fed to the next unit operation. So, for example, here in the liquid section we can classify this in a three section LLL. So, this is a lower liquid level minimum this much liquid level should always be present when we are considering the vertical separator and then NLL this is the normal condition. So, when the separator is getting operated under the normal condition the liquid level should be up to this point and then HLL the higher liquid level more than this liquid level is there then it is considered there is a possibility of surging means uh, the gas and liquid may get mixed together. So, the separation is not that much effective. Important point comes how to know what is the height of disengagement should be chosen, what is the height of this each section we will discuss later on this what is HS and HR. We can see here the HS is surge height and how to calculate the surge height, how to calculate another term is hold up height we will discuss in the next slide and why they are important. Here I would like to mention all these small small height make up the total height of the vertical separator and depend on the design criteria the height to diameter ratio within a certain range should be there to accept the design. So, it is not just based on the quantity of liquid and vapor phase not only just choosing LYD ratio or in vertical separator HYD ratio height to diameter ratio it is also important the minimum or maximum individual section height is also considered in the design. We will see as we see for vertical separator and horizontal separator how the things are different as well as in a particular type of the separator if it is a two phase it is a three phase how the things are different. Here also I would like to mention like mist eliminator is here we have to include certain height for that mist eliminator and above that mist eliminator again you see here one feet room should be there. So, in designing a vertical separator or in horizontal separator or I should generalize it in several type of the unit operation certain things are fixed they are based on the experience based on the experiment performed some section of a design are fixed or certain restrictions are there minimum this much should be there. So, for example, mist eliminator minimum height is 6 inches and for uh, above the mist eliminator there should be a room of 1 feet those things are fixed. Similar you will see as we go further with the example you will see certain cases the things are fixed. For example, the depend on the nozzle diameter this height H L L to inlet nozzle center line. So, the height is called H L I N that is fixed depends on the nozzle diameter it does not depends on other parameter or minimum height should be there. Altogether, when we sum up all this height to diameter ratio is maintained or not or the, the height to diameter ratio is in the acceptable range or not. In a three phase vertical separator things become little bit more complex because now you are having the two phases on the liquid side heavy liquid and light liquid they should have a separate section they are also not getting surged to each other when we are operating this separator. In this case heavy fluid is coming out from the bottom part. So, this is a heavy liquid nozzle and the light fluid is somewhere here in between. 
the feed is here, vapor is coming out from the top. So, similar let us start from the top, if mist aluminator is there 6 inches have to be added in the height and one should be added as a room above the mist aluminator. Then other height disengagement height HBN some more term will appear here with those also consider for a three phase separation like not only gas is getting separated from the liquid, but liquid liquid separation should also be accomplished within that zone. And from where we are taking the liquid out, what is the height of that liquid is baffle used to separate the heavy and liquid phase or not, how much area is available for each phase cross sectional area or ultimately what is the total volume of the separator is occupied by a heavy and light liquid all will be considered when we are calculating the total height of a vertical separator. So, that will be done like here the heavy liquid here this is a disengagement height when we sum of, of them it comes out as again H T and when we decide H T by D the this should be under design criteria and that is come out as 1.526 if it is in this range the design may be accepted considering what additional features like the baffle, mist eliminators and other things are required or not required. Let us go in a horizontal separator the things are little bit more complex as said the drag force exerted by gas on the liquid will be in the horizontal direction while the gravity will be playing on the vertical direction downside. So, the liquid this is for the three phase separator not for the two phase separator. So, we should have a room at the bottom of the separator or the horizontal separator where the heavy liquid can be stored or can be can be accumulated and then above that there should be a room for the liquid and there should be a provision they are not mixing together and this is hold up or search for the lighter liquid and this is HLL and there should be a reason where only the vapor phase is traveling or up this particular reason is occupied by the vapor phase only. So, in three phase we should have this height. So, the entire diameter of the horizontal like this is the horizontal tube, the entire diameter should be sectionalized how much part of this particular height of a separator is occupied by the heavy liquid, how much by the light liquid and how much by the vapor. Considering the provision there is no searching is happening. Depends on we are having this beer in separator or not the design will be different. So, for example, here when we are having this mist eliminator, this is already decided above the mist eliminator there should be 12 inch minimum and below that there should be 12 inch minimum. And when we are having this beer, the things will be like this. So, the feed enter from here, heavy and liquid are getting separated and the liquid are getting out from this reason where the liquid hold or surge should be counted considering the lower height, normal height and maximum height of the liquid level in a separator, the separator can be designed. Depends again on what is the nozzle diameter for the inlet and outlet. In this case it is considered all are having the same diameter, the length should be adjusted to account all these things those are happening within the separator and in this kind of the separator we can see the L y d ratio is given at what operating conditions the separator is used in terms of the pressure if it is 0 to 250 pressure the ratio should be 1.5 to 3 and 250 to 500 this should be 3 to 4 and when the pressure is more than 500 and that generally happens the ratio should be 4 to 6. So, within the range of 0 to any pressure the ratio of total length to diameter should be between 1.5 to 6. The total length could be depend on the internal arrangement we have like in case of Beth Beer we are having this L 1 separate length and L 2 is a separate length and the total length will be L 1 plus L 2. 
looks little complex, but if we go step by step procedure, we can understand it in a better way. Before we are going to understand the calculation procedure step by step to estimate L y d for the horizontal and H y d for the vertical separator, let us understand some of the key terminology or key terms those appear in this type of the design. First one is a hold up time represented by T H and that says the time it takes to reduce the liquid level from normal to empty while maintaining a normal outlet flow without feed makeup. It means for example, this is a separator feed is here we are getting the outlet of product from here. Let us consider this we are talking about the liquid outlet. So, there is gas we are not counting and we are counting the liquid hold up time that says under the normal operation like let us say this is normal liquid level and this is minimum or lower liquid level and this is the maximum or highest liquid level. The time it takes to reduce liquid level from normal to empty means achieving lower value. So, from this normal to this point how much time it needs when normal outlet is maintained and no feed is entering. So, by any mean it happens there is no feed is entering to a separator while the outlet is maintained at the previous condition how much time it will take from normal to become empty or reaching the lower liquid level and that is very alarming situation that is already mentioned this equipment is connected to some other unit operation and suddenly if this kind of the situation is happening when there is no feed is entering into a separator the liquid level in the separator will go down and further operation will also get affected. That is why there is significant room is considered or hold up volume is considered that allow the operator or the engineer to make appropriate action to run the operation under the safe mode and that is hold up time is very important. Depending on what is the hold up time I choose, I can design my separator this much height in vertical separator or this much length should be dedicated for that type of a separator. Another is important term is search time. It says by any mean it may happens you are getting the continuous feed but for example, the outlet got plugged or it is not having any outlet. What will happen? The liquid level in the separator either horizontal or vertical separator the liquid level will go up and when it is going up from the normal and reaching the maximum liquid level that is allowed. If it is reaching this one then the surging will start the gas liquid will start getting mixed and no separation will happen again this is alarming situation something should be done to make sure the outlet is working properly and the search time and hold up times are going to guide us in what capacity or in a time capacity something can be managed while the operation is running continuously and to have those time frame the volume in a separator should be designed in such a manner. Hold up time and search time are two very important parameters and those are in the hand of a design person who understand how much time is required to maintain the situation to a previous condition. So, the hold up time and search time are two important parameters and the time can be converted into area or height or length that we will see during our discussion when the data are not available because both the things depend on the experience, depend on the uh, decision making uh, capability what these parameters should be chosen because these are the things which allows us to run the operation safely and if the data are not given for the search time it should be considered as, as half of hold up time. That is one of the crude way of or the one of the way of designing the things. So, let us go through the step by step procedure how we can calculate 
the different section dimension for a horizontal and vertical separator. So, let us start with the vertical separator, we are starting with three phase separator and later on that can be converted into two phase separator calculation procedure. So, in a vertical separator we are having two section, we are supposed to deal with the gas liquid and liquid liquid system. So, in gas liquid we can consider gas as one phase other thing is just a liquid both heavy and light. We can calculate the terminal velocity by doing the force balance or the previous expression those we obtained and with the help of that we can calculate the vapor volumetric flow rate. And once we know how much quantity of the vapor we are going to deal with this, we can calculate the vessel internal diameter because we know Q is equal to area into velocity. So, when we know this vapor velocity and I said the vapor velocity that is considered by doing the force balance is a terminal velocity, uh, conservative gas could be take lesser value than that one and that could be 75 percent of the terminal velocity. So, the vapor velocity could be just 0 0.75 of terminal velocity. It may, may have been chosen differently, but in general it is considered as 0 0.75 Vt. So, the basal internal diameter considering there is no obstacle, we can calculate the area and by cross sectional area we can calculate d i. We will see the formula later on. So, based on this crude assumption what we did we can calculate the diameter internal diameter of the vessel and then we end here with the gas liquid part. We move to heavy liquid and light liquid part. We do the same force balance there using the Stokes law. We can calculate settling velocity of the heavy liquid and rising velocity of light liquid. Considering those things, we can calculate volumetric flow rate of both the heavy and light phases and settling time for both heavy and light. The settling time will help us to understand the designing of a separator. If baffles are present as already mentioned, if internal arrangement is done like baffles are present in the system, certain things has to be corrected because the baffle will reduce the total volume or the area or cross sectional area that particular phase can occupy. After that we can calculate the resistance time of each phase, how long particular phase is going to stay in a separator in terms of heavy liquid and light liquid and condition can be checked that says if the resistance time of light liquid is lesser than settling time of heavier phase or other way resistance time of heavier liquid is lesser than settling time of light liquid, there is a possibility that we have to increase the diameter or dimension of the column, because the liquid separation is controlling the phenomena and we have to increase the diameter and repeat the procedure again from step 4. It means here whatever the diameter we have calculated that is based on certain assumption that is first assumption the vapor velocity is just 0.75 of terminal velocity. Second assumption we consider there is there is an entire cross sectional area of a vertical separator available for gas to travel. If there are baffles then or other obstacle then that area is not available. So, this can be corrected here by increasing the diameter we can increase like a uh, few more inches 2 to 6 inches can be increases and perform the calculation again until this condition is satisfied. And when we are satisfied with this condition we can continue further otherwise every time we have to go to step 4 change the diameter or increase the diameter of vessel. Once it is done we can calculate the hold of height and surge height. The two important parameter here the hold of height for the light liquid and the surge height if we can calculate both we are able to calculate the total height of the vessel considering other part either they are related to some uh, fixed number like mist eliminator 6 inches is required. And they are related to nozzle diameter or some other parameter. Just knowing important part is what should be the surge height 
and hold of it that is allowing the operation is happening smoothly. We will see in the next slide when we are going step by step again. Decision has to be made so if the ratio of total height S t of this, this is S t divided by diameter is within this reasonable range 1.5 to 6, it is ok. Otherwise, we have to start again the calculation and find out the places where the correction can be made to maintain this decision criteria. We will see. So, let us say step wise procedures. First thing is terminal velocity, we know it depends on density of the liquid. In three phase, this density of liquid is the total density of both heavy liquid as well as light liquid. So, considering both heavy and light as a single liquid fluid, the density should be calculated. As I mentioned, the conservative gas is like 0.75 of terminal velocity. If amount or density of the gas are given to us, we can calculate its volumetric flow rate. Knowing the volumetric flow rate by Q is equal to area multiplied by this velocity, we can calculate the internal diameter of the vessel. Again, in this calculation, we assume the entire pi d square by 4 is available for the gas to use. If baffles or other obstacles are there, we have to make the correction. K can be get from the literature. Internal diameter should be adjusted depend on what we are having uh, in the column. If missed aluminator, then add more inches to diameter. If without missed aluminator, the internal diameter you chosen is ok. Again, this is kind of an initial guess based on the condition like this. First condition, second is this where entire area is used by the gas and this need to be iterated if we are not getting the satisfactory solution. We will see. So, in fourth step by using the Stokes buoyancy law, we can calculate settling velocity of the heavy phase considering it is getting separated from the continuous light phase liquid and rising velocity of light liquid again in this case the viscosity of heavy fluid should be considered because heavy fluid is continuous phase from where the light liquid is getting separated. The volumetric flow rate if known for both if we know what are these two fluids heavy and light what are their density and how much quantity of those are supposed to be treated in this column, we can calculate the volumetric flow rate for heavy and light. So, now we know the volumetric flow rate, we know the velocity of those two phases. What we can do? We can calculate some other things and those other things could be like settling time for heavy and light liquid. In that case, we need to know the height of the column that is going to be occupied by the heavy phase and light phase. And in this case, you will see here the 12 is just a numerical value because converting inches to feet, we will get that thing. And knowing this time for the light and heavy, we need to know the H L and H S. And minimum value for this from the design consideration is 1 feet. So, the initial guess we are going to use is just 1 feet. If the calculation is not meeting our decision criteria, then we may adjust these. Otherwise, 1 feet is considered for this and 1 feet is considered for heavy. Again, if baffle plates are used, the area occupied by heavy or light, mostly it is light fluid which faces this baffle plate, the area should be corrected. There are several procedures in the literature, those allow us to calculate this a d and based on that the A L should be calculated. The A is original without any obstacle, without any baffles, the area of the section. The resistance time of each phase can be calculated. Now, we know the height, those we assume 1 feet for both light phase and heavy phase. We can calculate the time, resistance time of I think this should be L and this should be H. Similar here also, this should be uh, H 
and this would be L. We can calculate the residence time of each phase where it is considered the E H is equal to area because we are considering the heavy phase is occupying the entire cross sectional area while the liquid phase or light liquid phase is going to occupy the area after correcting it with the baffle that is installed there. Condition is again same T R for the light phase is lesser than the T S settling for the heavy phase or other way the T R for heavy phase is lesser than T S for the light phase we are not satisfied there is a chances the surging will happen. In that case the diameter of the vessel the third step where we had calculated the diameter considering the vapor velocity is just 0 0.75 of the terminal velocity should be adjusted should be increased and when we are increasing those the calculation those are based on the diameter should be performed again to match the condition that says there is no surging is happening between the heavy phase and the light phase. After knowing that thing we can calculate the hold of height and surge height once the criteria are met in the previous slide and that is Q L L T H by A L the area of level and the T H and T S are the time those are in the hand of operator or the designer who design this particular column and that is based on the experience the T H and T S can be chosen and usually 2 to 10 minutes are good enough for T H and half of that is the search time we can calculate that thing. So, the height of hold up and the height for the search can be calculated and in the search we are calculating both Q for the flow rate of the light phase as well as flow rate of heavy phase divided by total cross sectional area. And once we know each section T R T S and other we can calculate vessels total height and that is summation of those small small height those are the section in a vertical column for a specific job or for a specific need. And once we calculate that we can check again the decision criteria it is falling in this range or not. If not we have to do correction again. Now, the correction can be made in terms of the height we had chosen for H L and H H. Again if it is supposed to reduce then we cannot play with those because those are minimum 1 feet we had considered. If those are supposed to increase we can increase those heights there. Here you can see the combination here all mentioned. Let us see what is this H A minimum 6 inch should be there. So, certain things are not in calculation they are fixed based on the experience and H B N depend on the diameter of the nozzle. So, it should be 0 0.5 D N plus 2 feet should be added. So, the liquid height from above baffle to feed nozzle this is H B N. S T is disengagement height again the disengagement height could be 0 0.5 of the diameter or minimum 3 feet. If 0 0.5 multiplier diameter is coming above 3 feet it is ok otherwise 3 feet should be the minimum disengagement height should be chosen. Hold up and other things. So, hold up we can be assumed with 1 feet if needed we can change it if the calculation is not meeting the criteria and similar for H L in step 7 where we consider both the height should be corrected. For H R we know step 10 that is where we calculated here and depend if we want more time to control the situation we want more time for the surge and height accordingly H R and H S can be adjusted. So, for more detail you can visit the chapter in this book advanced natural gas engineering by Wang and Michael Econo White we can you can go through uh, the example solved there. When we talk about two phase separator the two phase separator is simple compared to three phase separator because there is no need to calculate anything that is related to liquid liquid separation. So, the steps in the previous procedure 4, 5, 7, 8 and 9 can be just omitted and we can go through with a little bit simpler procedure. The things will be the same the total height to diameter ratio should be maintained and we can adjust this height as well as the diameter of the vessel. So, if we go 
step wise procedure again gas liquid we know how to calculate terminal velocity the k value can be obtained from the literature vapor volumetric flow rate depend on the density and the amount of the vapor going to be treated with this can be calculated vessel diameter just q is equal to area into vapor velocity we can calculate the internal diameter similar procedure as we did for the three phase while on the other side now liquid liquid part is gone we can just consider just one liquid and the volumetric flow rate as well as the cross sectional area of the liquid can be calculated and we directly go to hold up and surge volume and hold up and surge volume if we fix the th and ts we can calculate the hold up volume as well as surge volume low liquid level height can be calculated and for that you see here there are several reports one of them is here based on the vessel diameter the lll for the liquid lower level liquid depend on the pressure can be chosen from the literature that is given for horizontal as well as vertical separator the height of hll in inches should be chosen from the literature further if we go up we see like now i know the volume i know the cross sectional area again no baffle is used inter cross sectional area is used by the fluid or the liquid we can calculate the height and height for both surge as well as hold up reason now previously in three phase separator we started assuming minimum one feet so here also the condition is minimum one feet should be there for hs and for hs it should be minimum half feet for the two phase separator but that can also be calculated with this expressions if we go further we will see the height from high liquid level to center line so this hlin is from the literature these are the correlation given based on the experience that says h l i n is equal to 1 plus d n that's in nozzle diameter and that can be in feet so the values are given depend on mist eliminator or the mist in inlet diverter is there or not the empirical formula can be used the ninth step is disengagement height again that's not depend on the calculation uh most probably it is taken from the empirical or the uh, experience the height should be 0.5 of the diameter or minimum of 3 feet plus 0.5 of the nozzle diameter or 2 plus 0.5 of nozzle diameter depend on mist eliminator is chosen in the design or not chosen so once we know this small sections height those either fixed by the design criteria those are based on experience or by the calculation the total height st should be counted and we can see from here this is hll first one now we are having this height from low level to normal level that is hold up height from normal level to higher level that is surge height now we are having from this level to nozzle hl in and then this is hd disengagement height and if mist eliminator is there then the height should be added if not then this should be zero if mist eliminator is there 6 inches for mist eliminator 1 feet above of that and when we sum all of them the criteria st by d should be maintained so when we see st calculation we still want to check st by d ratio and that should be within the acceptable range that is 1.5 to 6 so this calculation is little simpler than the three phase separator now when we consider the horizontal separator you see the processor or some of these step are similar but more detailed information is required in terms of the total diameter of the vessel in a horizontal separator is going to be shared by the faces those are present so if it is a three phase separator the diameter part should be occupied by the heavy liquid then light liquid and on top of that this should be the vapor or the gaseous phase that is occupying the diameter so initial steps are little bit similar like the terminal velocity we can still assume the same force balance equation is there we can calculate the terminal velocity again conservative 
gas can be made for the vapor velocity, we can calculate the amount of the gas going to be treated with the separator, we can calculate the internal diameter and similar can be applied for the light and heavy, we can calculate the amount of heavy and light means the volumetric flow rate, hold up and surge volume should be calculated because that is where the option in the design part where we can keep the room for emergency situation. So, the basal diameter can be considered just like considering the volume of the uh, surge and hold up considering L y d ratio and the L y d ratio again from the literature that says at what operating condition the horizontal separator is going to be used. If it is 0 to 250 psi, the L y d should be chosen as 1.5 to 3.0 and 250 to 500, 3.2, 4.0 and if the pressure is higher than 500, it would be 4.0 to 6.0. So, depend on the pressure condition, we can choose one of the lower limit of L y d to calculate the vessel diameter. Considering again, this is a entire cross sectional area used by the V h and V s. Once we know internal diameter, we can process further calculate some of the information that is required. So, set the vapor space height that is above the liquid level that is h v to the larger of 0 0.2 diameter or 2 feet, which one is the larger. We can fix h v value and once we know the h v value, we can set the height of the heavy and light liquid. This can also be set to a particular value most probably it is given as like this minimum number should be there and then calculate the area occupied by the heavy and light liquid phase divided by the total area. And considering all these steps, we can calculate the minimum length to accommodate the liquid hold up as well as surge in this section. So, the total volume divided by the area and that area is corrected like this is total area, this is vapor area, this is heavy, this is light. The remaining area is for the surge and hold up and the length can be calculated because we know the volume of surge and volume of hold up. Then we can calculate the liquid dropout time height divided by the vapor. So, the in the vapor part when we are having gas and liquid in that region what is the time the vapor will travel from inlet to outlet within that time if you want liquid or dropping out we can calculate the time required for that purpose. Actual vapor velocity will be different because now previously we consider a conservative gas where we said uh, by doing the force balance we can calculate the terminal velocity using the terminal velocity but conservative gas we can calculate the vapor velocity. Now, we know the area occupied by the vapor and we know the volumetric flow rate of vapor, we can calculate the actual vapor velocity and once we know that, we can calculate minimum length required for vapor liquid separation using these two data. Actual vapor velocity multiplied by the liquid drop out time, we can calculate L minimum and when we say L minimum is like this, we have to check. If L is greater than L minimum, design is acceptable, go to the next step. If L is lesser than L minimum, set the new value of L as L is equal to L minimum and if the condition are too lesser than the L minimum, then we have to increase the vapor region or the height of the vapor region in the horizontal separator. It means we have to increase the diameter of this thing or when we are increasing the diameter, we have to calculate the A v again and we have to start from step 9 here A v is appearing here. So, based on this we have to correct the A v and then calculate the length and check length again. If length is greater than greater than minimum length, it means L can only be reduced and L minimum increase if H v is reduced. So, the volume or the height occupied by the vapor should be reduced and then we have to go again to step 6 and then step 9 to recalculate the things. For this and other calculation, 
much less than and much greater than means a variance of greater than 20 percent. So, this means like when we should consider the greater than greater than condition when it is 20 percent difference between L and L minimum we should take this kind of the action. So, when we go further we can calculate the settling velocity of the heavy and light phase not only the velocity we can also calculate the settling time for the light and heavy phases we have to replace H L with this formula for the light liquid and heavy just H L L to calculate the resistance time uh, to calculate the settling time and the resistance time can also be calculated because we know now the area occupied by the heavy liquid phase and we know what is the volumetric flow rate of the heavy phase. Similar for the liquid phase the area available is A T minus A V minus the area occupied by the heavy phase we can calculate the resistance time for that. Similar condition as we tested for the vertical separators should be checked here because that says there is no surging is happening and then increase the vessel length if this criteria says like this then we have to increase the vessel length liquid separation is controlling the phenomena and to change the length we can choose maximum of either this or this quantity. So, this came out from here if we adjust this we can get the length that is should be chosen as a new criteria is a maximum of either this or this. Then calculate L y d once we know L y d if it is greater than 6 then increase the diameter. So, in first case we have to decrease the diameter if the L y d ratio is less than 1.5 and when the ratio is greater than 6 we have to increase the diameter go back to step 5 repeat the entire procedure to calculate the L value. Further there are some other things that can also be calculated like the surface area of the shell and heads according to the literature what should be the weight of the vessel, but we are not interested in that part. Ultimately we want to know the total length that is required in the horizontal separator and when we can adjust the length by diameter ratio that is in the acceptable range 1.5 to 6 depend on the pressure of operation we can settle down there with the design. Other things are there which allow us to do more refinement about the things. If additional devices like boot, wear and bucket are present means any obstacle or any internal facilities to increase the resistance time or some other things are present in the system we have to correct our procedure considering those part also. Here I have highlighted like two phase horizontal separator design procedure is very similar to that of the three phase separator except there is no liquid liquid separation as we had seen in the vertical separator when we shifted from three phase to two phase separator the things were much simpler than the three phase separator. So, those can be repeated for the horizontal separator and again this thing has been taken from the book and more detail with the numerical calculation can be found in this book. In this lecture we just had considered how to understand the internal height or length distribution in a horizontal and vertical separator how they are going to affect the design and where the scope to adjust the parameter. We did not consider certain things uh, those are out of the scope of this subject like the material of construction, the bed of the separator, the design pressure we had chosen design pressure to calculate some of the parameter, but specifically we did not consider uh, material of construction will be considered based on the design pressure and the pressure margin should be kept for the safety reason like 10 percent of the maximum allowable pressure. The vessel thickness that is also part of the mechanical design of a separator that is not considered. Corrosion alloyance over the time the corrosion uh, will play a role and the alloyance in terms of the thickness should be considered. We did not do that thing. We did not consider the head design and detail of internal design. We just consider when there is a baffle present the, the area available for a particular phase will get reduced. We did not consider how many baffles should be there, what should be the location of the baffle there. The wall thickness, surface area and appropriate vessel weight can be used from the literature that says depend on the component the wall thickness can be calculated 
and ultimately approximate basal weight can also be calculated. Here this those the typical heads use depend on pressure and diameter what type of the head should be used uh, but this I consider as out of the scope of this subject. So, in summary we understood the separator, we understood the type of the separator, we just focus on gravity wave separator. In gravity wave separator we understood the calculation procedure that allows to calculate the volume of vapor and liquid phase that is can be achieved from a particular separator at a particular temperature and pressure condition. Then we discussed about the procedure of two phase and three phase horizontal and vertical separator design and the design criteria. With this I would like to end my topic here. Thank you very much for watching the video and we will meet in the next class. Thank you.